Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker, and today we are going to cover some more Phyrexia All Will Be One spoilers. Just yesterday and today we received a huge amount of spoilers. They're unofficial, but they're still spoilers and maybe these will be cool cards, but who knows. So let's dig into them. I'm going to start with the card types that have the least amount of cards and work towards the card types that have the most amount of cards. That way we can quickly get through some of those that don't have a lot into the more meatier section. The first section we're going to cover is Instance, and the only only card that we got revealed recently for instance is black sun's twilight x and a black instant up to one target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn if x is five or more return a creature card with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield so we can use this card to pretty much get rid of anything on the board because it gives it minus x minus x instead of dealing damage so even those creatures with indestructible can die to this card and it's also graveyard recursion so maybe you need to get something out of your graveyard well you can kill an opponent's creature and get it out and still get that value. This is a very cool card, and I can't wait to see what other instants we get. Next, we got one more Planeswalker revealed, and it is the Eternal Wanderer. Four white, white. Legendary Planeswalker. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each combat. Plus one. Exile up to one target artifact or creature. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. At the beginning of that player's at next end step. Zero. Create a 2-2 two -two white samurai creature token with double strike. Minus four. For each player, choose a creature that player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control not chosen this way. This is a pretty cool planeswalker because it allows us to bounce our creatures to regain that enter the battlefield value for its plus one. We can make a token for free with double strike which is pretty nice and right off the bat you can basically do a selective board wipe and get rid of all of your opponent's creatures. I can see this being a really powerful planeswalker and pretty much a board wipe in one so I think uh, I think we'll be seeing a lot of this play. Moving on to the sorceries we have red sun's twilight x red red sorcery destroy up to x target artifacts. If X is five or more, for each artifact destroyed this way, create a token that's a copy of it. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. Between the Brothers War and Phyrexia All Will Be One, we've received a lot of really cool artifact cards, and this is going to be a very powerful way to remove those cards, get their value, and play them against your opponent. I can see this card being a perfect one to put in most commander decks because you're going to be able to destroy all your opponent's artifacts and get all that value on your turn to get ahead. After that, we have White Sun's Twilight, X White White, Sorcery. You gain X life. Create X 1 1 colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. If X is 5 or more, destroy all other creatures. This is another awesome board white for white, and you get to create a bunch of colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature tokens with Toxic, meaning if your opponents can't build their board up after you wipe it, then you're going to get to go just swing in and potentially kill your opponent with poison counters. Moving on to enchantments, we get a really awesome reprint with Phyrexian Arena. One black black enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose a life. This is a really neat card that I think has fallen out of favor recently with all the other black card draw there is. But Phyrexian Arena is still a card I put in all of my black decks. It's super fun and it helps you get that early game card draw if you can play it on turn two or three. The art on this card also is very great. With Corrupted Veraska capturing Jace. Shirkvel's Hive. One in a white enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might. Artifact creature token with Toxic 1. And this creature can't block. Corrupted. As long as an opponent has three or more poison counters, creatures you control with toxic have lifelink right away this enchantment reminded me right of bitter blossom it's got the same ability you lose a life and make a 1-1 creature token this one can't block which is why bitter blossom is really good but it also has toxic and gives all creatures with toxic lifelink within the last two years we've received a lot of cards that draw you more cards whenever a little creature enters the battlefield and this is a perfect card to combo with those cards next moving into lands we have black cleave cliffs land black cleave cliffs enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other other lands. Taps for a black and a red. Well, in Phyrexia All Will Be One, we're going to get these reprinted lands that we've needed for a long time. These are really popular in modern and other 60 card formats because you can play them early on, untap, and be able to ramp very early. These are not cheap cards, so these are going to be awesome to pull from these packs. Copperline Gorge. Land. Copperline Gorge enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or few other lands. Add a red or green. Again, this is a really needed reprint, and I'm glad we're getting them here. Myrex. Land. Sphere. Tap to add a colorless. Tap to add one mana of any color. Activate only if Murex entered the battlefield this turn. 3. Tap. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with Toxic 1 and this creature can't be blocked. This is a theme I think we're going to see on a lot more cards are these little Phyrexian Mites. Sea Chrome Coast. Land. Sea Chrome Coast enters the battlefield tap unless you control 2 or fewer other land. Tap for a white and a blue. I personally picked up plays out of these and uh, it cost me so I'm very excited to see that they're reprinting this one as well. The Monumental Facade. Land. Sphere. The Monumental Facade enters the battlefield with 2 oil 
counters on it. Add a colorless. Remove an oil counter from the monumental facade. Put an oil counter on target artifact or creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Oil counters are going to be a big part of this set, and I'm very excited to see lands like this that can help you put them on your creatures when you need them. The Mycosynth Gardens. Land. Sphere. Tap to add a colorless. 1. Add 1 mana of any color. X. Tap. Mycosynth's Garden becomes a copy of target non-token artifact you control with mana value X or greater. I can see this card going for a lot of money because you can turn it into one of your best artifacts on the board and get even more value out of it. And it doesn't go away at the end of the turn, so it permanently becomes whatever artifact you decide to copy. The Seed Core. Land. Sphere. Add a colorless. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast Phyrexian creature spells. Corrupted. Tap. Target 1-1 one, one creature gets plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn. Activate only if an opponent has 3 or more poison counters. This is another really cool card that's going to be really great for all those Phyrexian cards you want to cast and fixing your mana. Now moving into artifacts, we have a lot of them. We have Conduit of the Worlds. 2 green green artifact. You may play lands from your graveyard. An ability I always love to see. Tap. Choose target non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, you can't cast additional spells this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. This is going to go right into my graveyard decks because sometimes you want to cast those big creatures but have no way to get them back. This is going to let you cast those big creatures or maybe a necessary spell out of your graveyard, limiting you on other spells you can play that turn, but the value is going to be really great. Dragon Wing Glider. 3 Red Red. Artifact Equipment. For Mirrodin! When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 Red Rebel Creature Token. Then attach this to it. Kind of similar to Zendikar. Equipped Creature gets plus 2 plus 2 and has Flying in Haste. Equip 3 Red Red. This being a rare I'm not really that excited about, it seems like they could do a little bit better, but uh, it's going to come in handy if, if you want to give something flying in haste. Encroaching Microsynth. Three in a blue. Artifact. Non-land permanents you control are artifacts in addition to their other type. The same is true for permanents spells you control with non-land permanent cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. This is basically like Mycosynth we already have. This is an incredibly powerful card and is awesome for artifact decks. I can see this card being very pricey. Mind Splicer Apparatus. Three in a blue. Artifact. Flash. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an oil counter on Mind Splicer Apparatus. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each oil counter on Mind Slicer Apparatus. There's no need for this card. There's no need to discount instants and sorceries that much. This is an awesome, awesome card, and I think it's going to be very powerful and very frustrating to play against if you don't have any artifact removal. Monument to Perfection. Two mana artifact. Three, tap. Search your library for a basic sphere or locust land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle. Three, Monument to Perfection becomes a 9-9 Ferrishing Construct artifact creature. Loses all abilities and gains indestructible and toxic 9. Activate only if there is 9 or more lands with different names among basic sphere and locust lands you control. I was curious if we were going to get another Blightsteel Colossus and uh, yes we are. There's a few conditions you have to meet for this. Having basic lands of different types, spheres of different types, and locust lands of different types, adding all up to 9 before you can do so, but uh, I can see players specifically building decks just to be able to play this card. This is going to be very interesting to say the least. Norn Wellspring. One in a white. Artifact. Whenever a creature you control dies, scry one and put an oil counter on Norn's Wellspring. One in tap. Remove two oil counters from Norn's Wellspring. Draw a card. I can see this being really powerful in Orzhov decks that revolve around little creatures that are dying all the time. You're going to get the scry cards you want on top of your library and then potentially draw them. Tablet of Completion. Two mana artifact. Tap. Put an oil counter on Tablet of Completion. Tap. Add a colorless. Activate only if Tablet of Completion has two or more oil counters on it. One. Tap. Draw a card. Activate only if if Tablet of Completion has five or more oil counters on it. I could see this maybe being good if you have a lot of proliferate in your deck to increase the number of oil counters you have not just once per turn, but this does not seem that good of a card. If you play it on turn two, you can tap it to put one counter on it. Turn three, you can tap it to put another counter on it, and it's not until turn four or two turns after you played it that you can actually tap it for just a generic mana, and that makes it so you can't draw cards later on. I would stay away from this card. Urbrask's four, two and a red. Artifact. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, put an oil counter on Urbras Forge. Then create an X1 Red Phyrexian Horror Creature Token with Trample and Haste, where X is the number of oil counters on Urbras Forge. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. This is a pretty neat card, and it's going to make some really big Trample Haste creatures. This is going to be annoying to play against, but I think it might be a fun 
one card to play. Blade of Shared Souls. Two and a blue. For Mirrodin. When this equipment enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 two -two red rebel creature token. Then attach this to it. Whenever Blade of Shared Souls becomes attached to a creature, for as long as Blade of Shared Souls remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another target creature you control. Equip two. This is an awesome card, and I can't wait to play it. You can basically attach it to a little 1-1 one -one you created, just like this 2-2 two -two rebel it creates for you, and copy an amazing creature on your board. This is going to be a staple card for sure. And with that, we're going to check out some creatures. And I'm going to divide the creatures up into regular and legendary, because there's quite a few legendary creatures, and I don't want them to get mixed in. Starting off with the non-legendaries, we have Archfiend of the Dross. Two black black creature, Phyrexian Demon. Flying. Archfiend of the Dross enters a battlefield with four oil counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from Archfiend of the Dross. Then, if it has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, its controller loses two life. Well, this seems like a very good card for those decks that you give your opponents creatures with, because Archfiend of the Dross is a very scary card and can very easily lose you the game. Even though he's a flying 4 mana 6-6, six, six, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, its controller loses two life, I'm not sure if I'm going to be running this in any of my decks. Argentum Mastercore. 5 mana artifact creature, Phyrexian Mastor. First strike, protection from multicolor. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Argentum Mastercore unless you discard a card. When you discard a card this way, destroy a target non-land permanent, and opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to the mana value of a discarded card. This is a very interesting card. That protection from multicolored is not a thing we've seen in a long time, so this is very interesting. And secondly, you can just start destroying your opponent's non-land permanents by discarding spells. Maybe there's some synergy you could work in there to get value off that, but this seems like a card you'd have to build around, but it seems good. Bloated Contaminator. Creature, Phyrexian Beast. Trample, Toxic One. Whenever Bloated Contaminant deals combat damage to player, proliferate. Three mana, Trample, Proliferate, and Toxic. This is going to be a really awesome card to play with. Evolve, Spindoderm. Two green green. Creature, Phyrexian Beast. Evolve, Spindoderm, enters the battlefield with four oil counters on it. Evolve, Spindoderm has Trample as long as it has two or fewer oil counters on it. Otherwise, it is Hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from Evolve, Spindoderm. Then, if it has no oil counters on it, sacrifice it. I don't know where exactly this card would be good for, but the fact that it gains Hexproof and then if you remove so many oil counters, it gets Trample, seems like there could be some sort of deck where this could be really powerful in. Mercurial Bell Dancer. One in a blue. Creature, Phyrexian Rogue. Mercurial Spell Dancer can't be blocked. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on Mercurial Spell Dancer. Whenever Mercurial Spell Dancer deals combat damage to a player, you may remove two oil counters from it. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell, you may choose a new target for the copy. This is a really interesting card, and I think there's going to be some sort of strategy where you can make it unblockable or give it flying to be able to combo off with those multiple spells that it copies. Verated Rot Priest. A single green. Creature, Phyrexian Druid. Toxic 1. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. Wow, is this a cool card. Because it says whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell, it doesn't say an opponent spell. So if you're building a deck where you place a lot of enchantments or spells on your creatures, you can just straight up kill your opponents by giving them poison counters like that. This seems really good, especially for just one green mana. Vindictive Flamestoker. A single red. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on Unvindictive Flame Stoker. Six and a red. Sacrifice Vindictive Flame Stoker. Discard your hand, then draw four cards. This ability costs one less to cap. This ability costs one less to activate for each oil counter on Vindictive Flame Stoker. This is a really interesting card in red. This is obviously very good in Spell Slinger decks because you're going to be able to put a lot of oil counters on it. And then maybe for a single red, you're going to be able to draw six or more cards. I can see this being a very, very popular card, especially in those Spell Slinger decks that just need card draw and just go through it so quickly. Zenith Chronicler. Artifact Creature. Phyrexian Construct. Whenever a player casts their first multicolored spell each turn, each other player draws a card. This is a very interesting kind of group hug card because not only do you draw a card, but, but each other player. This would be a really fun card to play in Commander if you're just trying to have some casual fun. And with that, let's move on to the Legendary Creature. I have 11 creatures to show off today. Like I said earlier, these are all unofficial spoilers, but I'm pretty sure they're real. Starting off, we have Gethane of Contracts. One black Black Black. Legendary Creature, Phyrexian Zombie. Other creatures you control get minus one, minus one. One Black Black. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains, if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate only as a sorcery. I'm not quite sure how you build around this card. Obviously, you want to do something to kill creatures. Maybe you have a strategy where your opponents lose life if creatures you control die and use him as your commander to make sure you can kill all your creatures. This card seems strange to me, but I'm sure somebody will figure it out. Braz. Unstoppable Juggernaut. Eight mana. Legendary artifact creature Juggernaut. Juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. Other creatures you control have
have base power and toughness 5-3 and are juggernauts in addition to their other creature types. We have been waiting for an amazing colorless commander and I think Gar's unstoppable juggernaut is it. I can see this playing out in a lot of artifact decks that make a lot of small artifact creatures that you can just create into 5-3 juggernauts and just fill the board with so much power your opponents can't do anything but concede. This is going to be a very popular commander I'm sure. Kemba, Ka, Enduring. One in a white. Legendary creature, Cat Cleric. Whenever Kemba, Ka, Enduring, or another cat enters a battlefield under your control, attach up to one target equipment you control to that creature. Equipped creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Three white, white, create a two, two white cat creature token. The instant I saw this card, I thought of the modern deck Hammer Time, because it likes to play cheap spells that can attach equipment to creatures. This makes that so much better. Whenever Kemba or another cat enters a battlefield, instantly attach an equipment is very strong, especially if you can give them haste. Kethek, Crucible, Goliath. Two, black, red. Legendary creature, Phyrexian Beast. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature with lesser mana value. Put that onto the battlefield, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is a very interesting version of Cascade, where you sack a creature and then you can get something else. It seems pretty interesting, and I'm sure there's some really cool strategies you could build with this, so I'm excited to see that. Nalira, the Living Cure, Breed in a White. Legendary creature, Human Scout. If you would get one or more poison counters, instead, you only get one poison counter, and you can't get additional poison counters this turn. Exile, Malira the Living Cure. Choose another target creature or artifact. When it is put into the graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Malira is a very interesting card and kind of is supposed to be the counter to Infect, right? The Living Cure? I think this is going to be interesting. I'm not sure how you play this outside of a poison counter deck, but I think her second ability, which basically has you return something if it would die to the battlefield, is a really cool ability and I can't wait to see more. Miglaz, Mazer Crusher. One, red, green. Legendary creature, Phyrexian Beast. Miglaz, Maze Crusher, enters a battlefield with five oil counters on it. One, remove an oil counter from Miglaz. It gains vigilance and menace until end of turn. Two, remove two oil counters from Miglaz. It gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Three, remove three oil counters from Miglaz. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. This is a pretty cool card to be a commander because it gives you a lot of versatility in its ability. This is the kind of commander you want to kind of build around and maybe you make it an oil counter deck so you can continue to put oil counters on him or maybe a Voltron deck so you can use his other abilities to make him really good. This seems like a really fun card. Ovika, Enigma, Goliath. 5, Blue, Red. Legendary Creature, Phyrexian Nightmare. Flying, Ward 3, and Pay 3 Life. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create X11 Red Phyrexian Goblin Creature Token, where X is the mana value of that spell. Then, they gain haste until end of turn. 6-6. Six, six. Ovika is a very interesting card. I instantly saw this and said, ooh, that's really good, and then was like, the mana value is pretty high for this, so you're gonna have to do some ramping or figure out how to do that in blue and red. But once you do, all of those spells you're going to be casting is going to make you so many creature tokens. It's going to be very cool. Rai, Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. Two white black. Legendary creature, Phyrexian Knight. Battle cry. Whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat. Prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Knight artifact creature tokens with toxic one. And this creature can't block. 3-4. This is a really, really interesting card. We haven't really ever seen anything like this. If you would deal damage, you can prevent that damage instead. That's a really unique ability we haven't seen, especially on creatures you control dealing the damage. And it creates those 1-1 one, one mites. This instantly looked at an Orzhov Aristocrats deck where you have all those little tokens and can sack them to deal major damage to your opponent. Maybe this way, instead of you just dealing one damage to your opponent, you can sack it and deal damage to all of those opponents. This card is going to be one I'm going to be building around. Thrun, Breaker of Silence. Three green green. Legendary creature, Troll Shaman. Thrun's back. We've been waiting a long time for this. This spell can't be countered. Trample. Thrun, Breaker of Silence, can't be the target of non-green spells your opponents control or abilities from non-green sources your opponents control. As long as it's your turn, Thrun has Indestructible. Thrun is a very old card that I happen to get a copy of through the Mystery Boosters, and he just is an interesting guy. So I'm really glad to see this card, and I don't know if this is really a card you can build around as your commander, but I'm really excited to see it back. Unctus Grand Meditech. One blue blue. Legendary artifact creature, Phyrexian Vidalkin. Other blue creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes tapped, draw a card, then discard a card. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one plus one. A Phyrexian blue mana, which can be paid for with either blue or two life. Until end of turn, target creature you control becomes a blue artifact in addition to its other colors and type. Activate only as a sorcery. This is a card I did not think we were going to be getting. There's a lot of synergies and combos in which you turn creatures into artifacts and manipulate them like that. But the fact, the fact that whenever other blue creatures become 
become tapped, you can discard and draw cards. It's just going to be an incredibly powerful way to just mill through your library. I'm sure this is going to be a very popular card, and a lot of people are going to build decks around it. And lastly, we have Venser Corpse Puppet. Blue and a black. Legendary Creature, Phyrexian Zombie Wizard. That's a mouthful. Lifelink, Toxic 1. Whenever you proliferate, choose one. If you don't control a creature named the Hallow Sentinel, create the Hallow Sentinel, a 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. Or, target artifact creature you control gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. Poor Venser turned into a corpse puppet. Yeah, these abilities are very strange. Whenever you proliferate is not something we have a lot of. There's, I mean, there's a good amount of it, but this is a deck you're going to build this around and create a bunch of these hollow sentinels and give them flying and lifelink. This seems like an interesting card and I can't wait to see what people do with it. Well, that's it for now. These are all the cards within the last two days that were spoiled and boy, are there some cool ones in there. I can't wait for this set to release fully and start playing with them. But if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and help me out. Recently, I've been getting a lot of attention and I really appreciate it if you're one of those viewers. And if you decide to subscribe, thank you very much. If you like this video and want to see more, you know, I have a whole bunch of other videos on my channel. You know, if you enjoyed it, please give a like. If you have something to say, maybe there's a card you like or maybe there's something you're not excited to see they bring in, please leave in the comments below. But I think that's it. So as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.